everyone. The playwright George Bernard Shaw sent Sir Winston Churchill a caustic invitation reading, I'm reserving two tickets for you for my premiere. Come and bring a friend if you have one. Churchill replied, impossible to be present for the first performance. We'll attend the second if there is one. That, that's what you call getting your own back in a sort of polite way. In the book of Exodus, the law allowed an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But Jesus said we must love even our enemies, which up to them was unheard of. It was revolutionary then, and it's revolutionary now. But our love for others has to be from the heart and go deeper than merely avoiding confrontation. The Northern Ireland conflict, for instance, resulted in the building of walls and barricades between people structures which are still there. The problem may be contained, but it's not truly resolved at a heart-to-heart -heart level. And the same when Israel built that great high wall, separating themselves from the Palestinians. The late Holy Father, St. John Paul II, said that they should have been building bridges, not walls. Pope Francis also made reference to this. But then again, Maybe there's a bit of latent anger in all of us who could easily be triggered when our sense of security is threatened. This is where our love is tested. But on the other side of the coin, we gain no credits either if our love for others is doled out in the exact same measure in which we hope to get it back. Jesus says, if you love those who love you, then you're no better than non-believers in the gospel. The badge of true Christianity is when we look beyond our clan, our class, beyond those people with whom we naturally feel comfortable, beyond our comfort zone, and associate with those who are not part of our inner circle. And this even could apply to parishes. This doesn't just apply to actually to better off people, but also to people in general, rich or poor, by boxing ourselves in, Whatever our social setting, our standing, our ability to love like Jesus is somewhat compromised. Jesus associated with different social elements of his day. The disenfranchised might have included the beggars, the lepers. Now they were isolated from everyone. They were quarantined, I think. What about the Samaritans? Jesus associated with them as well. Those with shady reputations. Now when they engaged with him, he enabled them to break out of the mould in which society had cast them and realise God loves them the same as everyone else, if not more. But he also associated with the better off, people like the rich young man, whom the scriptures tell us Jesus looked at him and loved him. And what about Nicodemus, who seemed to be fairly well off? And even Zacchaeus, whom scripture calls a wealthy tax collector. When they engaged with Jesus, it opened up a new chapter in their lives. Where do we stand in all of this? Jesus broke the existing social mould. And in his efforts to be inclusive of everyone, was himself rejected, of course. And nailed to the cross. But in so doing, as the scriptures tell us, he would draw all people to himself, with no exceptions, with no one left out, except those who excluded themselves. At Mass, we come to Calvary, where the Holy Spirit pours God's love into our hearts, a love which is not confined, but open to all. Now, thank you all very much for listening. God bless you all.